Hi, my name is Nikki. I am 39 years old. I am from Minnesota, and this is my testimony on how Jesus Christ saved me. First, I want to say thank you to Michael and Angela for the opportunity to share my testimony on their Heaven and Healing podcast. Um, in the Bible, it says that it is by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony that we will overcome him, him being Satan. And I think it's absolutely incredible that our testimony is in the same sentence as Jesus for overcoming the enemy. And to me, that is such an encouragement to share our testimony. So... I am nervous to share, to be completely vulnerable, but I'm going to do it afraid because really this is um, nothing to do with me and everything to do with glorifying God. So I was 34 when I first found Jesus. I grew up Lutheran and I would have always said that I was a Christian and believed in God. I heard stories about Jesus, but I didn't really know who he was or what he was about. Church was always important to me, but really it was just a Sunday morning event. It was religion, not relationship. That all changed in 2018 when I was encouraged to read the Bible for the first time and more specifically the New Testament. It was reading the New Testament and learning the love of Jesus and who he really is that changed my heart and everything for me. The word says, know the truth and the truth will set you free. God's word is full of freedom and really you're the only person who can truly understand what a mess you are in before Jesus untangles your mess and turns it into a message. Okay, so I'm gonna get right to the meat of my testimony and then I'm gonna back up and around a bit in my journey with Jesus, so I'm hoping you can stick with me here. So the short of it, I saw a demonic entity come through my bedroom window. It was huge and it was making the most horrific and heinous hissing sound that you could possibly imagine. In the Bible, it says that there will be gnashing of teeth in hell. And to be honest, when I heard this hissing sound, that's what I thought of. The entity was coming right at me as I was laying in my bed, and then a beam of light pushed it out the window. It was quick, but it honestly felt like forever. And then I thought in my head that was an angel protecting me from a demon, and I went to sleep. It honestly amazes me that I went to sleep after this. So some of you may stop listening now because you think I'm absolutely nuts and some of you may continue listening because you want to hear how crazy I am. No, the, the truth of it is this really happened. I am not lying. It was not a dream. If I thought that this could maybe sort of possibly slightly been a dream, there is absolutely no way that I would be sitting here putting this out there to be judged by you. So that's the short of it. Now let's get into the long of it. So let's rewind a bit. My son was around six months old and I wanted to start working out. Yoga had always been my workout of choice. Anyone that knows me knows that I loved yoga. But after giving my life to Jesus, every time I did yoga, I felt convicted. I did it. I. I didn't really understand conviction at the time though, and conviction really is just the Holy Spirit's loving correction in your life. Just as you would lovingly correct your child if they were misbehaving, God will do that with you if you let him. So anyway, I just kind of felt like I shouldn't be practicing, but I, I did it anyway. And I would justify it by saying things like, I am praying to Jesus when I'm practicing. I am not listening to the traditional yogi music. I'm just listening to nature, it's fine. It's just stretching, what's the difference? My intentions are good. These were the thoughts that I would have, but I'm here to tell you that the devil does not care about your intentions. The dialogue would happen every time that I would do yoga. So yeah, I wanted to work out anyway and I got a mat, downloaded an app and away I went. I did yoga, I felt convicted, I did it again, I did it again. 
Then something supernatural happened, and this is when I saw the demonic entity come through my bedroom window. The next morning, I told my husband, and I said, something kind of wild happened last night, and I told him. As the days went on, I felt like I needed to ask why this happened. Like, why was this entity even allowed to enter our home? I asked, and I asked, and I asked, Lord, what did I do to allow this entity to come through our window? We live in a new house. We prayed over the land. We prayed over the house. We wrote scriptures on our frame. No one had lived here previously. I'd, I'd literally done all of the things. I kept asking and asking and asking until I got my answer. Yoga. I didn't hear an audible, audible voice. It was more like a still knowing is the best way to describe it. I immediately threw away my yoga mat, deleted my app, and I've never turned back since. The amazing part in all of this is that at that point in time, not one person, post, podcast, sermon, message had spoken to me about this. Shortly after my experience, our church did address yoga and open doors, but my experience happened before any knowledge came my way regarding yoga. At this point in my faith, I also had no biblical knowledge on the subject. I had not yet read about idols and false gods in the Old Testament. My knowing in this came straight from God downloaded to my heart. What I think is quite amazing in all this is that a couple years um, before this actually happened, um, a few of my friends got together um, that had been walking with the Lord longer than me, and they knew that yoga was something to steer away from. They knew that I was practicing, and they had had a conversation like if they should confront me about it and say like, hey, maybe that's not something that you should be doing. Um, and they prayerfully decided not to. They instead took it to the Lord and they prayed for me about it, for the Lord to show me and reveal to me. And he did. Um, they didn't judge me. They didn't treat me any differently in between that time. They just prayed for me. And I'm so thankful to have friends like that. So I've come to find out that yoga is actually rooted in Hinduism and just the poses themselves are a form of worship to Hindu gods. Which Hindu gods aren't actually gods. These gods are demons. Principalities of darkness disguised as angels of light. I know it sounds dramatic, but it's true. I saw one like I just told you about. There's only one God and his name is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. So when this first had happened, I, I shared my experience with a small group of people and honestly, I'm very glad that I did because they could all testify to you that I was completely rattled and, and shaken by it. I ended up letting fear seep into my life because honestly, to say that seeing and hearing that demonic entity was terrifying, just doesn't do the description justice. I honestly know that this was a small glimpse of what hell is like. My experience lasted maybe one second, so to think of an eternity of this in hell is incredibly terrifying. Honestly, when I'd have enough courage to tell people about my experience, I would tremble even uttering the word demon. It wasn't until recently, actually, that I was delivered from that fear. One day I said, God, if you want me to share my testimony, you're going to have to help me not be afraid to say the word demon. And he helped me. Recently, I, I heard someone say this quote, and I thought, that is so good. So it goes like this. If demons are real, Satan is real. If Satan is real... Jesus is real. If Jesus is real, God is real. If God is real, the Bible is true. It's a backwards way of coming to the gospel. Um, but it is so good because I know that it's not just me having these type of experiences. I know that some of you watching right now don't actually think I'm crazy because you've had some of these experiences yourself. And I'm here to also tell you that you're not crazy. We serve a supernatural God, the creator of the universe, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And our battle is not with flesh and blood, but, of, but with principalities of darkness. This is all from the Bible. So anyway, let's get into some good news. The beautiful part of my testimony is 
that it is also a picture of God's grace. I didn't know I was stepping out of bounds, that I was giving a legal right and an open door to the enemy. That entity was trying to get inside of me, yet I was protected by one of God's angels. The word says, angels encamp around those who fear the Lord. God's grace isn't a license to keep sinning. Like once you know better, you do better. But this is just a small picture of his love, protection, and grace when believers fall short, for we all fall short of the glory of God. Also, this isn't a testimony about being lazy and not working out or caring about your body. The Bible actually says that our body is a temple. It is the house of the Holy Spirit. So exercise and have fun. You'll know the difference between stretching and yoga as stretching feels natural. Your body is the most amazing thing that you'll ever own. So treat it as such. I'm sharing my testimony because I want to help you get your heart right with the creator, Jesus. I have absolutely no judgment on you for doing yoga. I simply want to point you to the cross, to the good news of what Jesus Christ is protecting us from. It is literally the most important work we can do on earth. I want to expose the darkness, help you see life with an eternity mindset. Heaven and hell are real. And I want you to choose heaven. Life is short, eternity is long. Think about that for a minute. Like, I just turned 39, and that went by really fast. The next 40 is going to go by even faster. So check your heart. Like, where are you at? What do you have to lose by giving your heart to Jesus, really? You have everything to gain. There's scripture that reads, Lord, I believe, help me in my unbelief. And I think that's such a beautiful scripture because it's so relatable. God will help you. Be real with him. He can handle it. So coming out this experience, the Lord opened my eyes to other open doors from my past. I've had multiple supernatural experiences throughout my life, and I'm not going to sit here and go through every single one of them, but there are a few that I feel I should highlight, again, to glorify God and to expose darkness. So anyway, I am a child of the 90s, and if you were there, there were, thing, there were movies like The Craft, and now and then that glorified dark things like seances and they practice witchcraft and honestly I hate even admitting those things but I did them unknowing to what I was opening myself up to I must have been around the eighth grade when this one happened and we were at a birthday party we did a seance and people were acting just nuts they were acting crazy around me I was a part of it all but at this particular moment in time I was just standing there kind of watching everything around me and I was wearing a necklace that I loved it had an angel on it and I was standing there and the necklace just broke off my neck. And it didn't break in the clasp because I know sometimes that can happen, a clasp comes loose. That's not what happened, it broke in the middle of the chain. And this chain was like a multiple link chain. It was a hefty chain. Anyway, I had my mom fix it because I loved that necklace. And the crazy thing is, is I found it, I don't know, maybe a year ago in my jewelry box. It was there and I noticed that where my mom had fixed it, the link was different, of course. So I'm gonna show you that. So you can see, here's, here's the little, little angel, okay? And then this is the part where you can see it's a different chain link. And you can kind of see how hefty that chain link is too. I just think it's cool because it's a tangible piece to my testimony. I've told that to many people throughout the years. So it's pretty wild. Um, so, so growing up, I had a Ouija board. Uh, many people did. And when we moved to town, it came with us and apparently it got tucked away into my bedroom closet. In that bedroom, I experienced some paranormal stuff multiple times. Uh, I actually felt a physical presence pressing me into my bed and it terrified me. And I never really told anybody about it, maybe a handful, I don't even know if that, because I didn't understand it, I didn't know what it was. And honestly, like I thought people would be like, that's not real, but it was and I would physically just feel this pressing down on me. 
and um, it happened more when I was laying on my back, so I kind of trained myself throughout the years, honestly, to sleep on my stomach. And when um, we moved out of that house, we found the Ouija board in, in my closet, and that was absolutely the open door that allowed that in to the house, um, that allowed it into that room specifically. So it was an open door to the principalities of darkness. So in saying all this, I don't want to instill fear in sharing these things, but as I said earlier, let it be an encouragement pointing you to the cross, because Jesus will never leave or forsake you. That is a promise, for God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. When you understand the plans of the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy, you can better understand the precious gift of Jesus Christ. Another reason I felt led to share my testimony is because what you do matters. The open doors in your life matter. Be mindful. I struggled for a while trying to discern what is an open door and what isn't. I recently got the revelation to look at the fruit of it. The word says that you'll know them by their fruit. Is the fruit of it good or evil? What is the root of the subject? Ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Ask the Holy Spirit to help you, and he will help you discern. So I have a few more stories to share. Um, this one happened in 2017, and I had gone on vacation to Mexico. And I was given a drink that was spiked with some kind of drug. What it was, I do not know. It was an awful experience. I didn't sleep for 36 hours. There are more details, but I'm going to spare you. Um, anyway, when I came back from that trip, I felt completely empty. I wanted to cry and feel something, but I honestly just couldn't. All I felt was empty. I felt like I was completely hollow inside. It was incredibly isolating. In my desperation, I cried out to God and I said out loud, Satan, you are not welcome here. I am a child of God. At the time of my life, I honestly wouldn't have even known to say that, but my soul knew exactly how to cry out. Your soul knows what to do because God made you. No one had ever given me the knowledge to speak those words out loud, which I now know is a form of spiritual warfare. After I said those words, it was like my entire body filled up with feeling from the tips of my toes to the top of my head. And I began to just cry for I don't even know how long, but it was incredibly healing. And I now recognize that this experience was a form of deliverance. Deliverance is a beautiful freedom in Christ from that which binds you. For some of you listening, I know that this can all sound pretty wild. It's hard to understand, but I'm here to tell you that faith is not understanding all of it. If you completely understood all of it, that wouldn't be having faith in something. One of the very first verses that stood out to me was, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. We have to accept that we won't understand everything. Anyway, it was shortly after this, this experience that I found a wonderful church and soon thereafter started reading the New Testament and I began to understand who Jesus really is and the love he has for me. And as I read through the Bible that first time, I really saw the love of the Lord. I needed to know the love of the Lord. God is so cool and he knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you need and when you need it. When you read the Bible every day, you'll find freedom. Your life and mind and your heart will be transformed. You will be renewed, a new creation in Christ. It's really a beautiful thing. And I do wanna to mention too, because sometimes I don't feel like this is talked about enough, but that there does come a time in your journey of faith that if you continue to walk with Jesus, God will start to deal with you. It's the pruning process, cutting away old habits and old ways of thinking to bear good fruit the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those things are so beautiful, and that is all fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's also from the Bible. Anyway, the pruning process is a time when people can stray away from the Lord because they don't like to be dealt with. Don't let that be you. Stick it out with God and, and let Him lead you. The Lord is faithful and will complete the good work he has started in you. And the Lord has grace and mercy as you grow in your faith. So in that time, give yourself the same grace. The Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. It's not about how long it takes you. It's about having a teachable heart. So go to the Bible and be teachable and be willing to be corrected by God. 
So I have one more sweet testimony to share with you. Um, I love this testimony. When my husband and I were on our honeymoon, we were, we were walking back from seeing a beautiful waterfall and there was this little old man sitting in the back of an old truck. And I love old people and I love old trucks. And then to top it off, he had a bunch of little chicks with him like little peep chicks, like little chicks, chickens. And of course, we're gonna stop and say hi and, and see the little chicks. So he asked me, he said, would you like to hold one? And I said, of course I would. And he handed it to me and he said, his name is Blessing. And I thought, that is the sweetest name ever. So I was holding little Blessing and just loving this little, this little chick. And then as I handed it back to him, he looked at me in my eyes and he said, keep praying and keep reading your Bible. And he looked at me in my eyes and he had the kindest eyes. It's just like the sweetest moment. And I wanted to talk to him more, but like I walked away and I kind of kept looking back like, wait a second, who are you, you know? Like in the moment I didn't realize all the things that were going on, but I knew something was different. Because this, my friends, is an example of the Lord's angels because they are real too. I didn't know it at the time, but God highlighted it to me after some time. And my point in sharing this short testimony is that they all matter. They all edify the word of God and glorify his name. I recently learned that in Hebrew, testimony means do it again, God. So every time we speak out or read a testimony, we are saying, Lord, do it again with the same power and authority. And that, my friend, is why your testimony is in the same sentence as Jesus. Because if we keep sharing our testimony, Satan is defeated. My encouragement to you all, read the Bible and seek God first. Do not give the devil a foothold. Be mindful of what you're opening yourself up to and share your testimony. Jesus loves you and he grieves for you. It is his will that none shall perish, but all shall have everlasting life. You don't have to have it all figured out. Our job is to be faithful and let God do the changing from glory to glory. Do it again, God. I'm gonna end with a poem that I wrote a few years ago. And God gave me a word after a women's conference that I had gone to that I would write something short one day about who Jesus really is. And I was staying at my grandma Karen's farm one night, I woke up in the morning and it just kind of came to me and it was beautiful. And um, it's called Who Jesus Really Is. So it goes like, like this. Life, that's a big word. There's so much space to fill. We're born, we live, we die. The only choice we have in all of this is how we choose to live the in-between. That in-between is the defining piece to life eternal. That defining piece is Jesus. But who is Jesus? Christian or not, I believe Jesus is a man we all would have loved to know in his days of walking the earth. He is a man whose anthem was and still is love, who desired peace and unity among all kinds of kinds. He stood up for women and the oppressed. He ate with sinners. He is a man of honor and integrity who doesn't seek perfect and forgives amidst our failings knowing that we all fall short. He has no favorites. Jesus walked the earth performing miracle after miracle to show non-believers just how real he is. He healed the blind, he raised the dead, he calmed the storm, he made the lame walk, he mended hearts. And he still is performing miracles each and every day, all for the glory of God our Father, so that we may have eternal life. God gave us Jesus so we, all humans, can understand just how great our God is. Jesus died and rose again for all of us to know that a place called heaven, an earth-like paradise, awaits us all if we choose to believe. That is key, believing. You are not granted access without it. We're born, we live, we die. With Jesus we rise and have eternal life. Choose Jesus. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this Testimony Tuesday video. I really pray that you were blessed by it. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Heaven and Healing podcast channel if you haven't already. We go live on this channel every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. So set your notification bell and come back and see us really soon. And do consider partnering with the Heaven and Healing Ministry. There's a QR code up on the screen for you to become a monthly partner. Or if you just feel led to sow a one-time seed, there are different options to do so down below in the episode description. Heaven and Healing is entirely crowdfunded, only made possible through the generosity of the audience. So anything at all means so much to us. We thank you for your support and prayers. God bless. Jesus loves you.